everyone. Again, my name is McKenna Sellers. Welcome to MREA's Renewable Rendezvous. We're pleased to connect with you all to delve into our shared interest in clean energy solutions for Montana. Um, if you would be so kind, please tell us where you're joining from. Please uh, use the chat function here. Tell us your name, where you're located, and your affiliation if you have one, so we get to know the folks tuning into the call today. So a little background about MREA. We are a member-based nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing clean energy and renewables in the state of Montana. This is the second time that we've held our MREA Renewable Rendezvous, our networking event for the year for all of the people and the great minds and the forward-thinking ideas that make up MREA's identity. Our membership is comprised of renewable energy consumers like new rooftop solar owners or community solar subscribers, uh, supporters of clean energy um, who come from all different talks of life, from students to retirees, and of course, professionals in the field of renewables who are queued up to the inner workings and the tech um, on the front lines of decarbonized energy and in, in the Mayor, efficiency sector. That's really terrible. Yeah, I'm sure. I want to take a moment to highlight our industry business members, a few of which are here live today. I know that SBS Solar is with us, and I've seen some folks joining in from um, just looking at our attendees. Um, I'll make sure that I do some call outs as I, as I look at our attendee list. But in total, MREA has 34 industry business members that are engaged in our membership. Of course, we have hundreds of other members that are household members, associated business members, but I wanna do a call out to our industry business members. You can find them on MREA's installer directory, which is located on our website, but um, our industry business members are dedicated to holding themselves to a high level of professionalism, and we're really proud of our MREA business members. Um, they're dedicated to establishing a thriving distributed and utility scale solar sector in Montana, and they're willing to go above and beyond the already demanding responsibilities of running a local business in order to invest their time in a shared voice through the association. So here we are sharing a list of our members, our ener energy, excuse me, our industry business members, and we want to give them a call out this evening. We want to commend our installer members for everything that they do. To see the full list of MREA's industry business members, you can check out our directory on the website. So now I'll pass the mic to board member Sarah Stans to take us through the rest of our programming. Thanks so much, McKenna. Well, I'm calling in from Livingston, Montana. I seem to be in a dark hole of Wi-Fi and connectivity. And uh, this is our second year with our Re Renewal by Rendezvous. And it's really a opportunity and a chance to learn, uh, gather, celebrate outside of our typical circles, uh, especially as we're dispersed across the state. And it's my hope that you really enjoy this time dedicated um, to learning and maybe meeting some new faces and a preview and a snapshot of MREA's year ahead. Head. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, and we hope that you go away today from the rendezvous with some new inspiration and ideas. So the quick plan for this rendezvous hour is to begin with guest speakers. We're excited to have um, with us today who are fellow board members, and Kevin will introduce um, shortly, and they're going to share some insights on the Clean Energy Workforce Development Project, and we will cover some findings from MREA's 2023-2024 membership survey. Um, it's all the input that our membership provided and ways in which we can use this information to inform our work and how we're growing together in the future. So we'll share some highlights from our accomplishments in 2023, give you a preview of where our focus will be headed in the year ahead. And for those, we hope that you'll participate. We'll do a little short membership mixer at the end um, just to meet and greet some faces and, and have a little casual uh, dialogue at the end. Really cool to see that in real time. The bottom line thing that I took away is that no matter what walk of life that you're in or where you come from um, is really believing and in investing in Montana's clean powered economy um, like I do and that I share with my board and that if you're not a board member or if you're not a member of MREA and potentially a future board member of MREA, uh, we do encourage you to join. And we are running a little fun thing today. We thought we'd try something new. And through the end of February, all new members will get an MREA clean energy range 
Wrangler sticker. And so this means, you know, being a member, you're taking charge of your energy future, Montana's renewable energy future. You're helping the state round up and generate those clean energy electrons. And that is a really powerful thing. Um, so if you recruit a new member or you join yourself and tell us by the end of February, we'll send you this really cool uh, clean energy Wrangler sticker as well. And so you can join by signing up in the link below in the chat. Um, memberships at any dollar amount really do truly help us grow and MRE grow and help meet the needs of our membership to achieve our goals. So that is my little plug. I'm hoping to get one of those stickers myself. Um, but without further ado, we'd like to move on to our guest speakers uh, for joining us today. And I can't wait to learn more. Kevin, will you please help me introduce them? I sure would, Sarah. Thanks. Our guest speakers today are representatives of the Missoula Clean Energy Workforce Coalition, otherwise known as CWC. They were founded in December of 22. This coalition was created by joining forces between Climate Smart Missoula, Missoula County, Montana, Mountain Home, Montana, which is a nonprofit uh, providing shelter and a path to stable homes for young mothers, and the Missoula Economic Partnership. This four part coalition formed with a goal to build clean energy career pathways for low-income women and women of color in the Missoula area. With the help of a number of partners and employers, um, include some of Montana Renewable Energy Association solar uh, installers, which you'll probably hear about later, um, Missoula's Clean Energy Workforce Coalition was created by uh, a pilot strategy that received national recognition from the Department of Energy. Kudos. Without further ado, uh, welcome uh, Carolyn Bean and Amy uh, Sillenberg to the stage. Great. Thanks, everyone, for having us and for having me. And um, thanks for that introduction, Kevin. Yeah, I'm Amy Sullenberg. Pronounced that correctly, Kevin. Um, the Executive Director at Climate Smart Missoula. So on behalf of our coalition, I'm going to share a bit about this effort, where we're headed. And again, yeah, pass it over to Caroline in just a bit. Um, Caroline, I'll just... Yeah, there we go. So our coalition works to build a clean energy pathways for and with low income women and women of color, while helping employers create more gender inclusive and caregiving friendly workplaces. So this is the folks pictured here are some of the core team members, um, and we have lots of partners that we've grown over the course of the last year. Um, so our work, be this coalition began kind of as a hunch, we recognized a need um, in Late 2022, we applied for and received a substantial Department of Energy prize to develop this coalition. So we were one of 10 across the country to win this prize. It's been pretty fun and exciting. Um, next slide. And so for context, you all know Missoula, we're a small urban city in a mostly rural area um, of the state of Montana. And we breathe the effects of climate change every summer, like all of you probably do when smoke rolls into our valley. We lack the workforce to both adapt to the climate problem and simultaneously to be part of the solution. And so we had recognized that and that really formed some of how we're thinking about our coalition. At the same time, we face serious housing and economic challenges. We need good paying jobs, simply put. And this is what, uh, where our coalition came in. We sit at the intersection of these wicked problems and are working to ensure that those harmed the most historically stand to benefit. And this is where Mountain Home Montana comes in. They have anchored our coalition from the start. Um, yeah, as was mentioned, this is a nonprofit that offers wraparound services. 20% of their clients are indigenous, 80% are single parents, and are 100% are are at risk of houselessness. So we thought if we could design a workforce development program that works for a mountain home mom, we'd have a program that worked for so many others, advancing both economic justice and the clean energy transition. So the first phase um, of really getting this off the ground, we set uh, out to understand the barriers and to strengthen our coalition. 
We learned in focus groups with moms that a really rigid apprenticeship was not going to work. So original ideas had to shift, of course, and we pivoted to a broader multi-pathway approach. We hired a coordinator to design a program that now Caroline will describe. Thanks, Amy. And um, I'll just note, while our coalition began working with Mountain Home Montana, we are as you could tell in our mission statement, interested in working with people beyond those who are served by Mountain Home. Um, so we're happy to talk more about that as well. But as Amy said, if we could design a program that worked well for folks with all of these barriers, we knew we'd be designing a really accessible program. So as Amy mentioned, we, we knew we needed um, a pathway to clean energy trades that was less rigid than the standard pre-apprenticeship or apprenticeship program um, right away. But we still um, wanted to make sure that we were focused on the intersection of all these problems. So we wanted to create jobs that were vital for the clean energy transition, first and foremost, that also offered a quality livable wage um, with opportunity for professional growth while also making sure that those jobs were accessible to caregivers um, and were uh, workplaces um, that women would be included in those workplaces and seen as, um, as uh, valuable contributors in them. And from our analysis, we saw that there were about 1,100 job openings in that clean energy transition, quality livable wage intersection. And then from a, a lot of research we had done of other programs, we saw that those, um, those same jobs could be accessible to caregivers provided that we um, could could provide um, support, um, social services support to get people into those jobs. So with that as kind of the, like the driving force of those three intersections, the second part of our project with the DOE prize was to test solutions. So we brought in um, clean energy employers um, and folks who had worked in the clean energy trades or just the, the trades in general to do focus groups and workshops with Mountain Home Moms and other folks in the community. Um, you can see Orion oh, Thornton from Onsite Energy. He gave some of the presentations. Um, we also had some other MRE members who were involved in this. Um, just sharing more about what their job looks like, how they got into it, what it would mean for someone else to, to come into that workforce and what prere prerequisites they would need to meet. Um, while we were doing some of that hands-on um, workshop-based um, programming. We were also just doing a ton of research. Amy and I are not workforce development professionals. Um, it's honestly a, a more, more of an emergent field, this idea of workforce development just in the last five or so years is what we hear from our economic partnership friends. So we had a lot of conversations that we needed to have with people all across the spectrum, ranging from climate organizers and activists to folks at the state, to those in the Department of Labor and the Department of Energy and uh, people working in the trades now, people working in labor now. Uh, we really have talked to a ton of people to try to figure out what the parameters of this program could be. Um, and I'll give another shout out to MREA one of the Exploring Energy series with the Blue-Green Alliance was a really um, valuable foothold for us to begin engaging with BGA, and they've been a, a really valuable conduit to labor for us, so that's been super helpful. Um, I mentioned the Department of Labor. Alongside all of this, we've also been recognized by the Department of Labor, so we got to travel to D.C. Um, to meet with them as part of the National League of Cities build connections with federal agencies um, and learn more about the programs and resources we could bring back to Missoula and the state of Montana more broadly. Um, as part of this initial year of working together on this, we have some good results to present at first. So we've held five pathway awareness workshops with 40 participants who have come. 67% of them um, expressed interest in learning more about a clean energy job. And I believe it was something like 93% of them had never heard of the clean energy trades or clean energy jobs before attending one of these workshops. So that was a really um, positive number for moving the needle on awareness. Uh, we've had 64 partner conversations. We've doubled our core coalition and we are currently pursuing five funding opportunities right now to bring more money to, the, to this um, effort. And then as was, was mentioned, we did um, 
uh, as part of this Department of Energy prize, we were invited to a summit in Atlanta with the other nine teams. We came in second place in the country. So out of the 10 teams, we placed second and were awarded an additional $50,000. I was personally very excited about the big check. Amy still makes fun of me a little bit of how excited I was about the big check. Um, but here we are with two folks from the Department of Energy's Environmental Justice Program who were the judges for, for the event. Um, so now as we move forward, we have, uh, we've, we've won $230,000. Um, much of it has been spent on the new capacity. We have about enough runway for another year of programming with existing um, existing funding, but what we're focused on are sort of these five things. So we want to create an apprenticeship ready program where um, we can have all women cohorts come in, learn about the, tr the clean energy trades, learn what it would look like to be to enter a formal apprenticeship program. As part of that, get um, some basic skills um, that, so that they'd be ready to go on to a job site. We're currently developing that curriculum right now. If any of you listening are, are interested in that sort of thing and would like to help us with that, we would be really open to it. Um, as part of this, we're also doing soft skills trainings and some of the, um, the participants might not have had a job in the trades before, um, or it might be their first job ever and they need help developing their resume or practicing interviewing or understanding what it means um, to be a part of a job site. We'll be providing that training as well. And then we're also hoping to form a tradeswoman alliance um, who can help advise us on this effort. Um, so again, if you're out there and you're a woman in the trades and like to help us with that, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. And we're also developing an employer council um, of employers who can both advise and support this program and potentially also um, guarantee interviews to women who graduate from our cohort. Um, if you might be interested in employing them, you could, you could uh, guarantee that you'd offer them an interview. And we're happy to talk more about that as well. Um, so we are, as I said, pursuing more funding opportunities to help us get this curriculum off the ground. We believe it'll cost us around $100,000 um, a year to run two cohorts a year, um, I believe are some of our conservative estimates. Hopefully we can do more as well. This is a picture from a, a similar program in um, the Chicago area, WIST, um, which we've been looking to for a lot of advice. So we might one day have a center like this in Missoula or in the state where women can go and get their start in the trades. Um, and then I'll, I'll just leave with this photo from a, a mountain home workshop at Home Resource where folks were learning how to make some stools and some basic little furniture for their kids at home. Um, and it's just been such a privilege to, to work on this project. It's been a really wonderful collaborative effort and it's been exciting to see the traction that it's gotten nationally. Um, although not, um, it does, it's not short of its own challenges and there's always new roadblocks to navigate around and um, figure out, but it's been a really wonderful collaborative effort with lots of different voices coming to the table um, that we, we don't often, we don't always work with. Um, so that's been an exciting um, place to, to get to work with new partners and see all of us coming together and sharing our experiences and background um, in advance in the mission of advancing uh, more diversity in the clean energy trades. All right, so with that, um, that's all we have and we've got quite a bit of time for questions. So happy to take those now. If anybody wants to put questions in the chat, you can raise your emoji hand. Um, we've also got a small enough group um, that if you just probably start speaking out loud, we can probably help facilitate. McKenna is going to help me do that. I've got one question from Susan. If nothing else. Oh, McKenna, were you on it? Go ahead. <laughs> it's all good. So question from Susan Bilo about recruiting candidates to go through the pre-apprenticeship program and maybe what, not only what you did in this initial phase, but what you were thinking for future tranches. Sure. Um, I can start with it. So for recruiting for these um, like initial workshops, uh, we mostly were advertising to mountain home moms, um, but also to uh, soft landing, I believe, Amy, but correct me if I'm wrong, and home resource, um, as well as um, 
Willard High School, which is an alternative high school. And so trying to bring some younger folks in as well. Um, it was a pretty simple re recruitment. We offered dinner and um, I think some money, even if you came and, mm -hmm. and learned more about it. Uh, what we plan to do in the future, I, th I think is a is working with existing partners to get the word out, um, but also just more of a general outreach. But Amy, please fill in if I'm missing anything on recruitment. Yeah, I think we, it depended on the workshops and the, the orientation of what we were doing that um, we we adjusted kind of depending on what, what we were offering and who we thought might be interested. So yeah, we reached out to, to partners and community members to help us. So it was both kind of, you know, the sort of soft social media kind of just putting the word out, but then also some really targeted, hey, let's show up at, at Willard, the alternative high school and talk to folks and see if we can, um, we can help you know bring them along so that's something that you know a lot of the stuff i think we've it always takes a little bit a lot longer and and a little more effort um to to figure some of those pieces out and then you know then there's also strategies for recruiting employers and talking to um other you know women in the trades and things like that it's just been um we have a diverse enough coalition that we've all tried to tap into some of our networks and try to be real intentional about um you know not just the people we know, but the people that would be best served for some of these kinds of projects. And, and I just want to mention this would be at another time, but I teach energy efficient uh, technologies and renewable energy for Gallatin College, and I've had no women in my classes so far, and I'd like to change that. But if I could somehow help you in your program with what I do, I'd like to touch base with you and see if there's any way I can help with that. That'd be great, Susan. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, we've we've learned it is a huge awareness is a huge piece of it. And getting women to see themselves in these positions or taking these classes has been a really important piece of our work that I think I underestimated a little bit when we began. Mm -hmm. Another um, question from the chat or Caroline. Oh yeah, I was just gonna. I was gonna see the next one. Yes, the eleven hundred jobs are in the immediate Missoula area. Um, I will say those are pretty uh, like back of the envelope numbers, taking data from quite a few different data sets. We're working on looking at all of the infrastructure jobs that are in the Missoula County region right now to see how many jobs those might create. Um, and I'd be happy to share um, Angie with you the data sets we looked at, if there's something you could do for your own place, if you'd like to do some estimates yourself. Yeah, and then maybe the next question I could jump in, is the program reproducible? You know, can we do, how we do this all over the place? And, you know, I think well, a couple of things we've learned, it really does help to have some funding just so that it's somebody's a part-time job to help coordinate this effort. Um, it really just depends on what your goals are. I think to get started, if there's a group of people that want to explore, as we describe it, kind of pathway awareness, it could be even a, you know, a small effort where you go into high schools and help them understand the trades that could be emphasized towards you know, low-income um, women, indigenous, but it also could just you know, be helping people see that there's more clean, their clean energy jobs are out there. So really it's, re I think what you would reproduce would be dependent on the interest and the the folks you were able to pull together. But there is a lot of economic development um, efforts and funds across the state, and there is money for, for workforce development. It's really having a little bit of a seed or a somebody that's able to poke at those uh, funding opportunities and figure out which ones could come forward for your community. And then once you get a little bit, maybe it's it's a little easier to keep it, it going if somebody can get, you know, again, paid to coordinate or or stand up a, a advisory group or an alliance or something like that. And I'll just add, Amy, you know, we are trying to share what has worked yeah. here with statewide efforts as much as possible. And so one good example of that is solar for all. If um, the Montana statewide or three state application is successful, We've been talking with the Bonneville Environmental Foundation about sharing the results from our workforce development 
pilot projects with them as they are developing the workforce development piece of solar for all. So we have no intention of having this work stop at Missoula County's jurisdiction. Like we want this to be statewide. If we can pilot things because we got this DOE funding and then share what has worked well or help you avoid pitfalls, we want to do that. And yeah, there's a lot of money for it. Thanks, Caroline and Amy. Uh, so to keep us moving, I think Kevin has a final question. And then if possible, there were a few questions about getting involved or how an installer might be able to join as a sponsor. Maybe you could answer those directly in the chat as Kevin uh, asks his question. Oh, you're on mute, Kevin. How about now? You're good. It was probably best that I muted myself anyway. I'm I'm just overly impressed of what you've got going there in Missoula and wasn't aware of it. And uh, there are so many oppor opportunities in the trades and it just needs a focus or an avenue to open a door for people. And it always kind of makes me feel good. And I take notice when I'm driving through construction, whether it's heavy equipment operators, a woman on a loader or driving a big dump truck or something like that. It kind of, I kind of get a smile on my face when I see that. Overall, there's something special going on in Missoula because time and again, across the gamut, um, the work that they're trying to do with renewable energy with Northwestern uh, for the inhabitants of Missoula and get, getting more clean energy or all clean energy delivered to their customers in that area, uh, you folks aren't as, uh, aren't bashful about plowing new ground, and I think that's really admirable. So, I had some experience in working with Helena Habitat for Humanity in my previous job before I retired, and that was also a great opportunity to see women putting sweat equity into building houses and losing lo learning a little bit of all about home building and painting and putting siding up and framing and so on. And I gotta tell you, one of those moments, it literally brings tears to your eyes when they turn over the key to a single mom with two or three kids, these houses were perfect for them and they learned something along the way. So Habitat uh, for Humanity and Helena is doing some really neat stuff. They're out of the Red Lodge area now and I think they're back over in your neck of the woods doing a lot of their housing up in Helena and so forth. But I think they're an opportunity as well to pick up some trade opportunities. Thanks, Kudos. Kevin. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think yeah, the, the last question, just um, um, how do installers join or sponsor and get involved? Did you answer that question? I didn't. I threw our coordinators contact information in the chat. Um, so Ali Solomon is the, the new person we hired to help us uh, move this forward. Um, if you're an employer who's who's interested in learning more, you don't have to be in Missoula County. We're interested in working with folks um, outside of those boundaries. You could just send Ali an email. Her email's in there. Um, and I can have McKenna circulate it afterwards as well. She is out of the office for the next couple of weeks, but um, I cleared it with her. She's she's good with a flood of emails from you all um, after this. Thank you. Are we uh, are we out of Q and A time? We're moving along. Is that right? Time checker. Thanks, McKenna. Um, Amy and Caroline, um, incredible work. I am I am super inspired, and I learned a lot. I didn't know much about it either, and. Uh, just thank you for opening the door, as Kevin said, uh, for something for the long game of, of renewables. It's very exciting stuff. Uh, and I look forward to watching that grow. So, you know, as you, 
as we can boast appropriately, uh, we do have some incredible members. So Caroline and Amy are get, being guest speakers. Thank you for being members and, uh, and a board member. Um, and at the end of last year, we convened our annual membership survey. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to hear from you uh, and to help guide our work and what's important, what we should do more of, what we should do less of, or, or anything um, that we're missing and an opportunity just to weigh in. And this year, uh, compared to the previous years I've been involved, it was the best as far as qualitative responses. And I'll just touch on a couple of them. Um, we will disseminate some of this information um, as we um, kind of coalesce it a little bit uh, better. But so I think what's what's important to share is the people that completed the membership, 51% have been involved uh, with with MREA for three years or less. And this really just shows MREA's commitment to serving not only our founding membership, uh, but there is a growing interest um, within the Clean Energy Network of Montana and across the geography, age group, sectors. So we're really seeing some growth there. And the majority of folks, close to about 60%, heard from MREA through a Montana solar installer um, or a friend or a colleague. This means that we're word of mouth and that's the best thing. Um, and the most that we can hope for. Uh, it's better, it's the best kind of marketing and um, it means that we're really doing a good job. And so thank you for all that um, that input. You know, the things that are important to people, the legislative alerts, uh, webinars and education and our newsletter and keeping people connected and involved um, in just what's going on around the state. And some of the top ranked future issues, you know, um, electrification across Montana, workforce development. So thank you again, um, Amy and Carolyn. And then um, which something that's close to my heart is solar access for rural communities and tribal nations. Um, and then a couple quotes I wanted to read is that what inspires people about MREA is the positive impacts I have already seen around the community and the potential to really have an impact in driving the industry forward through policy, education, training opportunities. Um, people are motivated uh, to work in policy, which is always exciting. It kind of can be a pretty big, scary thing. And um, McKenna, you do such a great job at the legislative sessions and keeping us informed and all abreast at that really fast paced moving environment that we just couldn't um, stay informed without it. Um, so a lot more quotes there. I'd love to share more of them, um, but I thought that those were some good highlights uh, for the membership survey. So thank you all for filling that out. Um, so with that, I am going to move on um, with my fo fellow board member and friend, Mark Hudeman. He's going to take us through MREA's latest accomplishments, and I'll leave it to you. Take it away. All right. Can you all hear me okay? You bet. Great. Uh, I really appreciate that, Sarah. Uh, as, as somebody who has solar on their home and, and solar at her family ranch, uh, the findings from the membership survey on the importance of MRA's legislative action alerts and presence at the Capitol defending solar, wind, and distributed energy really stands out for me. Uh, I'm Mark Judeman. I'm a MRA board member and the vice chair. Uh, and now that you've heard about where the organization shines, according to what our members say, I'd like to talk about the ground we covered last year. 2023 was a legislative year for in uh, for Montana, as I'm sure you all all aware. So MREA focused a lot of our time on policy and engaging with land, lawmakers. We worked with partners of the Conservation Working Group. Through a challenging legislative session, we successfully defended against bad bill proposals that it would, rolled, would have rolled back net metering and made it more difficult for Montanans to exercise their right to generate their own power through rooftop solar and small scale wind for their home or business. This was a huge win to overcoming tough odds. We, were all, we also successfully killed bills that would have taxed large scale renewable development entirely out of Montana, despite our strong wind resource potential and a bill that would have threatened fines and jail time for mom and pop small business owners trying to do right by their customers through product transparency. Following the legislative session, MRA began tracking uh, legislative interim committees focused on energy and long-term resource planning 
which will continue through 2025. Outside the state policy realm, MRE brought our expertise and resources on the road through local member meetups like the Renewable Roadshow. We help students at the high school level, such as at Helena High, and at the university level, such as Carroll College, MSU, and University of Montana, better understand Montana's energy and utility landscape, and represent. Uh, we also represented the clean energy sector at local government decision-making spaces, such as here in the city of Helena and also at the city of Bozeman, as a voice for advancing sound, fair, clean energy regulations. MREA also supported clean energy and climate events, conferences, and agri-solar workshops in rural, America, uh, rural Montana, Earth Day, Climate and Clean Energy Expos, Missoula Climate Week, the Aero Expo. We hosted our longstanding Montana Clean Energy Fair for the first time in Billings and made new connections for industry and the clean energy community on the eastern side of the state. The Exploring Energy webinar series continues to be a big part of our education work, and we celebrated nearly 200 participants while the program was running the second half of 2023. In total, MREA served 4,021 Montanans with our outreach and education last year. We hope that 2024 will be another record-breaking year. Thank you for all your support, and I'd like to hand this off now to Kylie to cover what MREA is up to in 2024. Thanks, Mark. Uh, and thanks for all the work that you guys do on the fair and events committees. Um, yeah, if anybody is able to make it to one of our events, I highly, highly recommend it. As Mark said, uh, my name is Kylie Esselstrom. I'm on the board of MREA, and I'm also the commercial and residential sales team lead on say Energy, a solar installer in Bozeman, Montana. Um, at the renewable, or, excuse me, at the renewable rendezvous last year, MREA expressed priorities in three key areas, providing timely education on renewable energy and energy efficiency incentives through the Inflation Reduction Act, expanding workforce development opportunities for renewable energy and energy efficiency careers, completing the final phase of the Montana Rural Solar Access Project. Reflecting on those three key areas, MREA lived up to our own high expectations, and we certainly won't be holding back in 2024. Providing Montana relevant guidance and incentives through the Inflation Reduction Act is still top of mind for our MREA, especially as the brass tax version of the program is in the IRA uh, goes live. For example, we're tracking the homes and high efficiency electric home rebates that are under development between the federal government and our state's energy office. We're holding info sessions on topics like elective pay and monetizing clean energy tax incentives for nonprofit entities. And we are applying for grants and facilitating partnerships that will accelerate clean energy access for all Montanans. In, to, uh, in 2024, MR MREA is leveraging the time of our industry engagement committee to cover solar consumer protections, sustainable growth of the solar industry, and trainings that meet the continuing education and staffing needs of our industry business members. On the education front, MREA will be keeping up our monthly Exploring Energy virtual series for our members and supporters. We'll also be expanding beyond our student and community outreach by joining audiences in the Flathead this spring at Flathead Community College for Uniting Nature and Technology, sponsored by Citizens Climate Lobby of Flathead Valley. MREA is already preparing for the 2025 legislative session by working with lawmakers to defend your right to generate your own electricity with clean energy resources and building working relationships with utility, labor, large-scale clean energy developers, and Montana business stakeholders. In line with our strategic planning, MREA will be putting organizational time and energy towards clean energy access for Montanans who have historically been marginalized and left out. We're excited to publicly announce our REAP Assistance for Montanans program, which will be a two-year endeavor working alongside Native American agricultural producers and small businesses to acquire funding to get solar and energy efficiency measures through USDA rural development. We'll be working with the Native American Development Corporation, Native American Community Development Corporation, Finance Services, and National Center for Appropriate Technology, NCAP, to get this initiative up and running. 
If you have connections to a potential to a potential REAP project recipient that could use help with the application project, project uh, we encourage you to get in touch with us. Are you guys inspired yet? With that, I'll pass it over to Shannon as she guides you through the final portion of the Renewable Rendezvous, where we'll cover ways that you can help uh, MREA. Sweet, thanks, Carly. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Shannon James, and I'm a new board member at MREA as of this year. Um, so for this event, we promised to plug you into ways um, you can get involved in renewable energy action in, in your community and statewide. And beyond what was shared on the workforce front through our guest speakers from the Missoula Clean Energy Workforce Coalition, there are a few other ways that you can take action to advance renewable energy development through MREA, um, one of which is to become a member if you aren't already. Uh, there are membership options for students, households, nonprofits, businesses. MREA creates a membership structure that works for anyone who wants to support clean, clean energy in the state. And as mentioned, MREA is built on member support. Um, so we wouldn't be able to do things like the Exploring Energy series or our solar homeowner workshops, the Clean Energy Expos and other advocacy without people like you investing in MREA. So as Sarah mentioned, we are running a special um, through the end of February for anyone who wants to renew their membership or join for the first time and you will receive a sticker the cool clean energy sticker right oh right here clean energy wrangler sticker um also your membership unlocks more opportunity to be part of montana's clean energy policy development community outreach and education and professional development um, through mrea's various committees so if these are areas you'd like to pursue, you can reach out to us at info at montanarenewables.org. Uh, and if you live in Billings, MREA is seeking clean energy fair power shift planners as we get ready for our flagship event in August. Uh, and if you're looking for something to do right after this call, that's super simple and direct. Uh, we would love to hear from you as far as um, any MREA exploring energy series topics you um, think would be good to discuss. And so, yeah, if you'll consider becoming a member to this great organization, we'd love to have you and feel free to invite others to join the network as well. And with that, I will pass it back to Sarah. Thank you, Shannon. Um, yeah, those are some great ways you can get involved. Um, we love having you all and seeing you all. And this wraps up the regularly scheduled programming for the rendezvous.